how do you, how did you guys come up with this health intervention? And how did you decide I'm going to unite black women? You, know, you could do a lot of things, you know, you could go to Africa, you could go to lots of different places, you know, but you somehow you guys connected around this idea. Yeah. You know, it's fascinating. It's because we didn't have a target audience. We were the target audience. And so we had to figure out things that allowed us to live, thrive. You know, um, I am a student of history and I love American history. And I particularly like understanding and studying the stories of forefathers and the founding of America. And, you know, they were onto something with this, this idea of life and liberty uh, and the pursuit of happiness, later property, right? They're onto something. And when you are starting kind of a revolution of ideas and culture, you really do have to start with the system of the body, right? You have to be able to live and your, your family has to be able to live and you have to be able to provide food for yourself and clean drinking water for yourself. And that might sound, um, I don't know, um, it might sound dramatic, but the state of affairs in America is one in which people who look like me um, and people who have my background, my particular background, where I'm one, one generation from two farmers, my father and my mother were both sharecroppers, that it's very easy that I could not provide for myself in this country. And so I want to start by providing for myself. And I want to start by um, living in a world where I don't feel so much stress that my chest is um, tight every day, which people call stress sometimes and leads to hypertension, all these sorts of things. And so I actually knew that I needed to feel this notion of freedom and liberation in my own body first, and that I didn't actually need to ask permission for that. And I, that felt powerful. So if I could somehow eke out space to be able to exist in my own body and not be valued by my labor to others and not give myself away to kind of the machine of bold capitalism, of democracy, of whatever it is that uses Black women's bodies, that if I could somehow reclaim my body, that that was a starting place. And so I did that. And Vanessa did that. And so we challenged each other to try to get healthy you know, if anyone's seen our TED Talk, Vanessa talks about losing the women in her family prematurely. And Jeff, that hasn't stopped because of Girl Trek. So it's what why we wake up every morning. But what has stopped is she's now on the path to living longer. And now her cousins are following her on the path to living longer. And so there was this notion that if Vanessa, Renee, her Vanessa and Tanya Lene, that's those are our middle names, what, what our families call us, right? That happened to run. <laughs> if we could figure out, if we could figure out how to live, then we it would be the best pilot ever, right? And so we started challenging each other to these different things and to learning and to all sorts of things. And so we we landed on walking every day um, because we didn't we weren't athletes. So we tried. We tried running. <laughs> like I did backpacking. I did all sorts of things. But really, like, come on, who are we kidding? I need something that is affordable. That is in backpacking is not affordable. Trust you me. I went through the National Outdoor Leadership <laughs> School. I'm an instructor now. I did Knowles. It's not affordable. I can barely afford the boot. It's like not affordable. Um, so uh, and she did like a, we would, we did the Chicago half marathon together. It was, she did great. It was really pathetic for me. So I needed something I could do every day that was affordable, that was accessible, and that was meaningful. And so we um, did a 10 week challenge with just our friends. It was just over 500 people on this old school email listserv. And we said, can you walk 10 weeks with us, five days a week, 30 minutes a day? Because we had read it on the CDC's website that that's how you disrupt disease. That's how you, um, you know, you live a healthy life is you get exercise 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Um, now that the U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Gina Benjamin's on our board, it turns out that was the right move to go to the CDC's website and to try to figure it out. She says that walking is such a powerful prescription that if it were in a pill form, that uh, it would be a magical drug that it, reviews, it reduces diabetes and heart disease um, and many, many other deadly and chronic diseases almost by half if you just walk 30 minutes a day. So we were on to something and all of our friends did it with us. Um, we walked for 10 weeks while we were working other jobs. I was working at Teach for America. 
Um, and I was a classroom teacher. And when the 10 weeks were over, Jeff, people were like, okay, what are we doing next? <laughs> like, oh, we're going to work. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so we knew we were onto something. There was such like a craving for like continued empowerment and advocacy for ourselves. A million women later, we represent, um, you know, 7% of the total population of Black women in America. We are the largest health movement for Black women. Uh, we are in many, many countries around the world. Um, and the question is, why is this working? 